Hello everybody, how are you? How's been your week? How's been your day? Well, I've had a very lovely day. I've had a lovely week as usual. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, I thank you. I give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is connected. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. Holy Spirit, have your way. We've come to learn again at your feet. Oh, Lord, my Father, less of me, more of you. Kill the flesh in me. It's all about you, Lord, my Father. Let everyone that listens, including me, Father, Lord, let us not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. That when the trumpet shall sound, we shall all make it to heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. It's good to be back. I know it's been quite some time. I think it's about two weeks now. And it's based on, it's because of the activities of the ministry, because of the fasting we had. That's the reason why you've not seen me for about a week or two weeks. You know, it looks like ages. You know, I love it when it comes to the things of God. When it comes to the things of God, oh my word, I just love it. Because it's a good thing. You know, there's one song I loved so much that says, It is a good thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Walking in the light of Lord. Oh, walk, 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 walking in the light. So I just love it. It's because we've had our fasting. And I apologize to all our subscribers that maybe you were not informed about the fasting. It was impromptu as the Holy Spirit led and is leading us in the mighty name of Jesus. My name is Evangelist Mary O. Ajakaye. And today the Lord has given us a topic. And um, I'm sure everybody that is connected right now, you subscribed. If you've not subscribed, please try and subscribe. It's a way of evangelizing. And I have a target. Before the end of this year, I should have at least a thousand subscribers. No, I want 5,000 subscribers. There's, there's nothing too hard for God to do. So we need to help each other. Subscribe, share, like. And I know that. And leave a comment. If there's any topic you want the Holy Spirit to enlighten you more, I'll pray. And if the Holy Spirit allows me, I will definitely come back. So thank you to everybody that is subscribing, that has subscribed, and everyone that has left comments you like. God bless you so much. The topic for today is message to the church. Message to the church. Who, who is the church? Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians because that's a very deep question that Okay, message to the church. So the church is you and I. According to 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27 says, I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. So each one of us, we are the church. I'm speaking to myself, I'm speaking to you. So this message is actually for me, is actually for you. A message to the church. The Lord wants me to, he wants to speak to us. All Christians, if you claim you are a child of God, the Lord has a message for you. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to each one of us. And we're going to be taking it bit by bit as the Holy Spirit leads us, bit by bit. So it's I, 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 the way I'm looking at it, I don't know how the Holy Spirit is going to lead, but it's not going to be a, a long message. But I don't want to limit the Holy Spirit because I can say long message is a short message. Meanwhile, it's going to be long. And I can say it's long and it's going to be short, but it's a message for you and I. The Lord wants to speak to us. There are a lot of things that are happening. As we all know that we're in the end times. Jesus Christ is returning very soon. Based on some revelations the Lord has shown me. Even as recent. Uh, there are a lot of things. There are a lot of activities. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of natural disaster. A lot of earthquake. A lot of things that will go wrong. A lot because these are the signs that our Lord is returning very, very soon. And the Bible says that the Lord is going to return like a thief in the night. A thief does not tell you when he's coming to boggle the house or is coming to raid. So we as Christians, we must be ready. Talks about the 10 virgins. Five were ready, five were not ready. You might have said, I had it yesterday, I had it today, I had it. When will Jesus come? He's going to come. He's coming very, very soon. The signs are already there. A lot of atrocities, a lot of things that have not been heard of will come up. There are a lot of diseases that we've not heard of that will come up. A lot of strange things that would come up because the Lord has already warned us that as soon as we see all of these things, we should know that he's returning very soon. So the Lord is returning very, 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 very soon. Let us... Um, have that mentality. Let us begin to prepare our house. If you've not forgiven someone, forgive them. It's not worth it. It's sincerely, it's not worth it that somebody, because of somebody's action, will make you miss heaven. It is not worth it, my brother, my sister. So we're going to be, as the Holy Spirit is leading, over to you, Holy Spirit. We're going to be reading from the book of Revelation. Revelation uh, chapter 2. 
to the angel of the church of Ephesus writes, This thing says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of seven golden lampstand, meaning that the Lord Almighty, Jesus Christ, is the one the Bible is talking about. He holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstand. I know your works. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. And I've found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience. And I've labored for my name's sake. And I'm not, and I've found them liars, verse 3. And you have persevered and have patience. And I've labored for my name's sake. And I've not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. The first message for the part of church, the part of the, uh, of the church regarding this particular passage is that you've left your first love, which is love. Yes, in the, in the, in the church, you do all the things you're meant to do. You evangelize. You, you have the gift of discernment as a body of Christ. As we all know that in the church, each of us, we are all gifted and we're all meant to come together to edify the church, to build the church together. So you that you know how to prophesy, you have your gifting in the church. You that you know how to, do, you are, uh, you know how to, um, you are into hospitality. You have a role in the church. Even as a cleaner, you have a role in the church. Personally, before I love cleaning the church, when the Lord called me into the ministry, when I became born again, even before I knew that the Lord has an assignment for me in the in his in his vineyard. I used to clean the toilet, clean everywhere. So each one of us will have a part to play in the body of Christ. Each one of us will have a, a part. So don't say that, oh, I, I, I leave it for the pastor. No, each one of us have a part to play. So for this particular set of Christians in the church, in whatever denomination you go to, we are all one. In whatever, whether you follow foundation on the soil of ministry or you do not, we are all one in the body of Christ. So for each one of us, for each one of us that we are Christians, in this particular Bible passage, you, you evangelize. You persevere. You have the gift of discernment. So you are able to recognize fake people. You are able to know that this one is operating under, under the spirit of the devil. This one is operating under the water spirit. This one is fake. This apostle is a fake man of God. This apostle is a fake woman of God. You are able to know all of these things. The Lord sees all of it. He sees your work. He sees everything. He sees your labor. He sees your patience. He sees everything. You cannot stand evil. You know, there are some churches that you go to that... Even when you enter there, you yourself, if you are not even born again, you feel uncomfortable because you're just looking at everybody like, oh, wow. Everybody is like this holy, holy aroma kind of thing. You know, that kind of thing. But the Lord said he has one thing against those churches. Love, 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 love. We must love our fellow human beings. When you claim you love a Christian, and you don't love that man that is outside your door or that man that is your neighbor. That love is, it has, it has a box. Our love must be genuine. We must love everyone we come in contact with. Be it an Eden, be it a Gentile, be it a Muslim, be it a Jew, be it a Gentile, be it a Nazareth. Whosoever we meet as Christians, you know, there's a thin line between claiming holy, holy, and hate him. There is a thin line between that. Oh, I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to talk to anybody. Oh, this one, you're, ah, you're not a Christian, so I cannot talk to you. No, we must love each other. We must love each other genuinely. You must, you must love. You must. You, your love must not be on what I'm going to get from you or what you're going to get from me. Your love is because God said you should love. Your love is based on. While we were yet sinners, the Lord died for us. While I was a sinner, the Lord died for me. He didn't look at my past because if I look at my past, I'm one of the, if you say, ah, this person, God will save this one. You say, no. But because of the fact that the Lord Almighty died for me, he loved me and he still loves me and I love him. Then we must show those love to everyone. Everyone we come in contact with. We're going to read a particular Bible passage. Now we're going to read Proverbs 25. From verse 21. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. 
For so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. We must love. That's just the plain, that's just it. So for those churches or for those body of Christ that, yes, it's very easy for us to claim holy, holier than thou. Oh, you don't do this. We don't wear trousers. You wear gown. Your gown is long. You don't wear hair ring. You don't use makeup. But you don't love. God is talking about that person. When you don't love, God is talking about you. And you know, on the day of judgment, we're all going to be judged individually. We're all going to be judged individually. It's not going to be based on, I go to this church, you go to that church. It's going to be on our works. So for that body of Christ, for these Christians, for that denomination that, in fact, your purpose is to be criticizing other churches, saying that, Oh, they belong to, uh, these ones are classical. These ones are old ones. You are very easy. It's very easy for you to judge. These ones, they wear earrings. These ones, they don't wear earrings. These ones, they wear makeup. This one does not wear makeup. This ones, men cannot, women cannot teach. This one, men can teach. My brother, my sister, on the day of judgment, will stand accordingly. It's not about whether you are female, whether you are male, whether you are whatever you are, whether you're a minister, you're a deaconess, you're a pastor, everybody will stand on their own. Whether you evangelist you will stand on your own i will stand on my own and will be judged according to our works on this earth so my brother my sisters all of us in the body of christ enough of criticism enough of saying this one belongs to classic this one does not belong to classic this one does this, this one does that the point is that we must love we must love each other because if there is love we're not going to be looking at it and saying, this one does not wear earrings, so I cannot relate with this one. This one does not cover her hair. I cannot relate with this one. It is an individual thing. It is an individual thing. It is individual. I keep saying everybody's relationship with God is, is an individual thing. Personally, I cannot minister with my head on cover. Why? Because the Holy Spirit told me. If the Holy Spirit tells me tomorrow that I want you to stop wearing makeup, I will stop. So let us stop criticizing and stop. Let us love one another, including people that are not Christian. Sometimes when you show love to them, they want to be like you. They want to be like, okay, wow, despite the way I'm acting towards this person, this person still loves me. Let me even see. Let me follow her to church. Let me see what she's talking about. But most times we just criticize each other. We're always abusing each other. We go on different platforms to abuse this one, abuse this one. Let there be love among us. Let there be love. For each person that is listening, we must love each other. We must love each other. Now we're going to go to church two. So church one, they have no love. Now we're going to read, there's one particular Bible passage that I even had to put down. Very, very important. That verse one, to the angel of the church. Okay, no, let's read um, Revelation one because I noted, I noted it in my book. Revelation one verse 20. Revelation one verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. So my brother, my sister, each church has, a, has their own angel. The point is that, are the angels still standing in the churches? Or are we having a transformed angel of light, which is the devil? These are questions we need to ponder on. Now let's go to church number 2. Revelation 2 verse 8. Revelation 2 verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Simeron write, This thing says the first and the last who was dead and came to life, Jesus Christ. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. Poverty does not mean physical poverty. Well, you know, when you humble yourself, when you do things that, that is not convenient, you, you go down, you know, you, you become humble just for the sake of the gospel. When people insult you, but yet you still, you know, somebody might be asking that, okay, what about the prayers we pray on foundation of the soil of ministry? Die, die, die. That, those type of prayers are for principalities and powers. The Bible says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. The devil does not understand anything except what? The kingdom of God suffered so violent and the violent take care by force. So there's a thin line between loving our fellow human beings and principalities and powers. I don't love principalities and powers. I don't love the devil. I don't love anything that is darkness by the grace of God. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich and I know the blaspheming of those 
who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. The Lord sees everything. This church, they know everything. Like that is the Lord has empowered them, has given them the grace. They know that these ones that are claiming they are Jews, they are actually hypocrites. You know, in the body of Christ, there are people that come to pretend. That they claim, oh, we are this, but they are genuinely, they are not. They come, sometimes they plant agents of darkness in the churches. But in this church, this church of in Simonal, they know, they know that these people that are claiming that they are Jews or whatever they are claiming to be, they are actually a synagogue of Satan. So this church actually knows. But what is the problem? Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The church, the church too, these are fraudulent churches. As we all know now that um, it takes the grace of God and the spirit of discernment to be, able, to be able to know which is even which. It's not everywhere that you see the gathering of people that they are saying they put a cross and they say they are church something, church. You see everywhere now there's church, church everywhere. You see church of this, church of that, church of that. It's not all of them that are really genuine. Some of them are actually synagogue of Satan. They are initiating people. They are initiating people. And people will not be able to tell you. Some people, they've entered the trap. So to come out is something else. They've taken oaths. They can't tell you. It will take the grace of God. They've, they've gone deep into, they've made a covenant with the devil. They've traded things, but they cannot tell you. So when they have such people, when they lure people into those type of churches, they lure them with different things. That's why as Christians, you must not be after miracles. You must not be after miracles. Once you are somebody that you're after miracles and not after God, you will fall. You will fall into the trap of the synagogue of Satan because that is what the enemy is doing now. It is not all miracle that is from the, the Lord Almighty. The Bible says we should be aware that for the angel, for the devil transforms into an angel of light, deceiving people. If you read the book of Revelation, you will see that the Antichrist will come and still perform signs and wonders in court. So do not be, don't be after miracles. I've noticed it that sometimes even is when there's testimony, you see somebody that, somebody that ran away from the platform for some time. When they start reading testimony, they'll come back. No, that is a wrong foundation. You must connect with the king of kings. Your purpose must be about God. Then the miracles will come. Then the testimonies will come. God test us. He want to know that, are you, is this one, if this one, if I give this one this testimony, this one will not serve me again. So the Lord will test you and stretch you and want you to love him if you're in a relationship. If you meet a man and the man might want to test you, you might you'll see some men that will pretend that they don't have money because they want to test whether this lady is after their money. So they will see, you see them, you might think, oh, they are stingy. Or, no, they are testing you to know whether this one, if this lady knows I have money, she will pretend to love me and be after my money. Once there is no change, she will run away. So this one is, a, this one is not a, a, a wife material. So you see some men that they pretend as if they don't have anything. Meanwhile, they are rich. Likewise for a lady too, based on some status or some circumstances or some situation you find yourself, maybe you've got some certain things, you pretend and be like, let me test this man, whether this man is genuine, maybe he's after something. So my brother, my sister, in this particular church, these are the fraudulent churches. But the, the Lord is speaking to this church that they should just hold steadfast. Because he knows that among the churches, among the people that are gathered, they are still agents of darkness. They are synagogue of Satan. They are churches of Satan now. They are not going to write it there and say, well, in some cases they might write it, but they are not going to write it and say, this is church of Satan. So, though some, they write it, but now everything is now subtle. You will not know. You are not going to know. Everything is very subtle. It is when you now, you now go in, before you know it, before you know it, you start having weird dreams. Before you know you've been initiated, you will not be able to come out again. And I pray for such an individual that is connected right now that you are in that, under that bondage. The Lord Almighty will set you free in the name of Jesus. So this church, the Lord knows their love. He knows everything. He's telling them that they will face tribulation. As we all know, we'll face tribulation. We're already in the days of tribulation. We'll face tribulation. But the Lord is telling us that we should be faithful until death because he will give us the crown of life. So for that, for Christians, 
children of God are watching or listening right now, hold steadfast. Yes, there are a lot of fraudulent churches everywhere. There are synagogues of Satan's everywhere. There are agents of darkness everywhere. There are quote men and women of God from the pit of hell everywhere. Hold steadfast. Focus on the race. Now let's go to church number three. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, This thing says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell. Where you dwell. Where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith. Even in the days in which Atipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. Because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Church 3. Hmm. Church 3. This is a place we all know that we are in the end time. For every nation, there are a, the works of darkness is a lot now. But there are some churches, there are some people that they find themselves in countries whereby Christianity is hard. That is, they don't have the expression, they don't have the, 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 uh, the freedom in which some countries, in some countries, there are some countries that you have the freedom to evangelize, you have the freedom to talk about Jesus to anybody, there is that freedom. But there are some people that, they are in nations that they are dominated by the Eden. They are dominated by, by, by idol worshippers. So the, for them to talk about Christ is very hard. Because why? There is no freedom of religion. There's a lady I was watching on CBN News that she's in. I don't know which country. I'm not sure. She's been there for years just because she said, my God died for me. What has your God done for you? That's all. That is all. Just an argument. That she's been in prison. I think it's in Pakistan. She's been there. So British and American, they are saying, what can they do to help her? I don't know whether she's American, still, but they want to rise up CBN news. They're saying it over the news just because she said that. But there are some nations that you can say that and you will just laugh over it and just talk about that. Okay, if my God, you know, just talk about it. But there are some people that they cannot do that. Now, the Lord said that for people that they find themselves there, he says, despite all that, you are still holding fast to, my, to his name. Well done. The Lord is saying, you well done. If it, if, because of time, we're not going to look at Atipas. Atipas was a, a matter that was killed. But he said he has a few things against us. So there are two ways to this as the Holy Spirit is leading. The first is, if you're connected right now, you're living in a country whereby you don't have the freedom of speech you cannot even talk about yourself you cannot you cannot you can't evangelize as you want to be the lord knows you and he, he will give you the grace to be to hold steadfast and not give up and then for those of us that are christians based on where, where wherever you're living whether you're living in a country where you can you are able to express yourself or you're not able to express yourself Meanwhile, despite the fact that you are living in darkness, that is everything about you is darkness. You can see that promiscuity is a is not a big deal now. Sexual immorality is not a big deal. Everything negativity is no longer a big deal. On the TV, they oh TV is so wonderful, but yet it has its negativity. On TV, twenty four hours TV, different channel. There's religious channel. There's one for psyche. Where you can call psyche, they will do a witchcraft. Psyche, they will tell you your style is this freedom of speech. We are living in those times, whether we like it or not, we are living in those times. But there's something the Lord is against that is not happy with Balaam. And if you read the book of Balaam, if you read the book of Numbers, if you if you know about Balaam and Balak, what made that prophet have a problem is covetousness. He was enticed with what the king had for him. So he, he was so enticed that he was teaching the king what to do. He said, this is it. If these people, the only way they can, they can, you can break the edge, they break the fellowship between them and God is by making them marry false idols, by getting them into marry, set up a party for them, let them into marry, let them fall into sexual sin. No problem. Then the Lord is not going to be happy with them. In this particular situation my brother my sister 
as Christians, we are falling into this. Prosperity. Prosperity. I receive. I receive. You can sit down and listen to a teaching in court. Listen to whatever it is that you want to listen to. People love it when you tell them, I receive. Receive it. Receive it. There's nothing there. There's nothing. Even when I pray that type of prayer for people, receive. But there is a thin line between it. All about it now is about prosperity. Prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. We are forgetting what the Bible says. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. Prosperity will be added unto you. Not seek. The Bible did not say all of these things will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God. No. The kingdom of God comes first. Seeking means looking for something. Seeking means going out of your way to find it. Then all of the prosperity will be added unto you. There is covetousness in the body of Christ. There is covetousness. Everybody wants to ride the best car. There is nothing wrong. Nobody wants to start small. Five, seven principles of prosperity. How you come. Everything is about money, 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 money. The Lord is against it. Convertiousness. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. To the glory of God and to the shame of the Lord, to the shame of the devil. And I'm praying to the Lord to give me the grace. That is one grace that the Lord has given me. I am content. When it has to do with the things of God, I'll say, God, this is it. This is what we need. When the Lord says, announce it, I announce it. I take my mind off it. If you want to contribute, contribute. If you like, don't contribute. God, will, The work of God will still go on. The work of God will still go on. But now it is getting to the extreme. Convectiousness. Even in the body, as pastors, as evangelists, even as members of the church. Convectiousness is all about prosperity. We don't hear holiness anymore. We don't hear about live holy. Holiness, holiness. For you to get to heaven, you need to live a holy life. Simple. To eat sacrifice to idols. If you know me very well, I don't celebrate Christmas. I don't celebrate Easter. Because why? There is nothing like that in the Bible. There is no way in the Bible that the Lord said, celebrate my bets. If you find it, please, can you send it to me? Yes, you can say that, okay, um, it's good to celebrate a great person. Can you go and find out the history of Christmas? And can you go and find out the history of Easter? Is a pagan. Is an idol. But now in the body of Christ, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it anymore. The church has now, we are, we've now blended with the world. We blended with the world. Oh, there's nothing wrong. After all, it's a celebration. There is something wrong. The Bible says to eat things sacrificed to idols. So when you celebrate it, you are eating things sacrificed to the idols. Easter is not in the Bible. Christmas is not in the Bible. So why are we celebrating it? Why are we celebrating it? There are idols and God hates it. Thou shall have no other God except Jehovah. Except Jehovah. So the body of Christ now, we've blended with the world. We, we, we become, let it just be like that, you know. We met it like that. So let it just be like that, you know. After all, it's just one day. Hey, my brother, my sister, the Lord said I should tell you to tell me, to tell that pastor, to tell that leader, to tell you as a child of God, the Lord is against it. Simple. The Lord has told me he's against it. It is idol. Easter is idol. Christmas is idolatry. You see, my, 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 my heart is falling off because when the Holy Spirit is ministering, you just, you just need to say it. So please note that. And to commit sexual immorality. Sexual immorality does not, is not only when you 
fornicate or uh, do, uh, commit adultery. When you look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. We're still going to go deep into the next church. And then by God's grace, next week, we're going to continue to the churches. So we're going to treat only four churches today. Church of prosperity, who don't preach holiness, who hide the sin, who hide sin, who don't talk about holiness. So they know that these two people, this couple, they are living a, an unholy life. But because they pay tight, the pastor will refuse to talk. Evangelists refuse to talk. <laughs> I remember my sister I was talking to when I was asking her a question. She wanted to say something. I said, please, it's better I don't even hear than I hear and I pretend. No, 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 no. So please don't say it. Don't say it. Now let's go to the next church. Um, thus you also have those who owe the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now verse 18, we're going to stop in, the, um, in church number 4. And to the angel of the church in Teatrurel, write, This thing says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. So the Lord knows that you're doing a lot of things for the work of God. You are doing a lot of things. You love. In fact, you love. When it comes to showing love, you show love. Those are the churches that they have a program for the homeless. They have the program for the poor, for the orphans, for the widows. They have all of this service to both the community, to each one of us. You know, you, you do all of these things for the work of God. You have faith and you are patient, you know, because to work with God, you have to be patient. If you don't have patience, you won't be able to work with God. You have, you have to, because sometimes the Holy Spirit just say, wait. And that waiting might, you never know when. And so that it will take, take one step. So you have to you have to calm down. No rushing with God. The and the and as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit sexual immorality. And eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality. And she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. And those who commit adultery with her, eat with her into great tribulation. Unless they repent of their deeds. This is where we're going to stop. This particular Bible passage, as the Holy Spirit inspires me and is inspired.